Hello, YouTube world. And Kirkpatrick. Thanks for dropping in. As by now, I know the people that follow my channel, most of you, <clears throat> if you're not, listen up. <clears throat> uh, Sulphur, Oklahoma, you know. <clears throat> That's my town. It's my adopted town. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> if I ever had to leave here, that's where I'd go. Well, it got hit by F3 tornado, not once, but twice, in one night, about 35, 40 minutes apart. But anyway, it wiped that town out. I mean, downtown is blowed up, and a lot of the neighborhoods are just blowed up. Uh, Arms Family Homestead. Just got a good video out about that. For those that follow me that don't know who I'm talking about, check it out. I would put links in, but I don't know how to do that. I'm a one-take dude. <laughs> and uh, the best one I've seen so far, though, is Eddie Family Farm. Uh, that came out today, showing the devastation in Sulphur, Oklahoma. It's, 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 it's horrible. I mean, I've been there. I've that park, I've been in that park, drank the sulfur water, even got a jack, a jug of it to take back home to mama. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, just trees just wiped out, knocked down. Just, it's all I've ever seen. Nature has a lot of power. I've been through a few tornadoes over the years, <clears throat> and five or six hurricanes. <clears throat> Uh, and I can tell you, as far as devastation goes to in one immediate area, the tornado is way worse than a hurricane. And a hurricane uh, affects a large area, uh, but a tornado can wipe houses, slap off the foundation, and they don't even, there's nothing there. Just empty. That's what it is, F5 does that. It's just foundations, and you don't even know where it jumps at. It jumps 20 miles up the road, dumped all in the forest or whatever. Anyhow, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do this now, and I'll do it when I end, I hope, if I can remember to do it. But uh, I'm going to, like I said, I don't know how to leave links or any of that junk. I'm just a just old country boy. Happen to get on YouTube a little bit. Anyway, uh, there is a relief fund that is legitimate. And the, and the uh, Crossways Church is handling the distribution of the funds. And right now, generators and storage tote boxes are what's needed most. Because people have to go pick up their pieces of their life. What do you do when you pick them up? You need to put them in some kind of storage box. It's wild, ain't it? Anyway, I'm going I'm to put this up here. Uh, let's see if I can get it where you can see. Man, the lighting's bad tonight, and I apologize for that. Oh, man. Anyway. It's bank first, and bank spelled B-A-N-C. First dot bank forward slash sulfur. Okay. I think I got that right. Oh, my handwriting's terrible. Oh, see that above it? It says Rhett. His Rhett's going to get and he's going to forget about the wet bit. He made it sunset, then the threat is still to be had yet. Yeah, Rhett. Y'all know Rhett? Chestnut Hills Farmstead. Working on a song for him, and uh, there's a few uh, words that rhyme with Rhett. If you got any words that rhyme with Rhett, <clears throat> put them in the comments. Help me write this song. I'll give you credit. If we make any money, I'll split it with you. Yeah, we will. 
All right, <clears throat> let's get back on serious stuff. I have, I have, I have seen some damage from tornadoes riding through towns. I mean, Little Rock, Arkansas got hit one time. I was on the road coming back from Kansas, and tornadoes and the, this is in the AM, FM radio. And it, you know, it's I could see up ahead, man, this crap was coming. I pulled off the exit on that interstate, I think at I-40. <clears throat> I went down a block and I turned into a, what looked like a parking garage. And I'll be safe. <clears throat> when I pulled up there and the guy just opened the gate. He didn't even charge me nothing. I went in there and got out. When I went up there toward him, he said, Get in the building, get in the building, it's safe. <clears throat> and he come right behind me. We went in the building. And, uh, you hear that old noise, you know. Everybody, a lot of people been in them say that it sounds like a train. It didn't sound like no train to me. It sounded like a boom, boom, boom. And a boom, boom, boom. And I've heard trains going down a track. I don't know. Anyhow, <clears throat> He was over with before you could take a stick. I was in a office building in an office where I actually place it so printers, copiers, the same thing, I think, back in the day. And uh, everybody got up, a few windows got busted out while we were sitting in there. I got up and I went back out in my car or truck, whatever it was. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, got in and lay and left. <clears throat> and I remember getting on the interstate and having to go around a power line, having to go around a tree, and then getting on 40 and riding down the road and then seeing a bunch of flashing lights ahead and having to pull over and getting a, a far left a shoulder. Jumped through there and I looked over there and there was a car with a telephone pole and I come straight through the windshield. And I could see a man, but I couldn't see his head. I later learned he got decapitated. Yeah. Anyway, that was, that's pretty rough stuff, ain't it? <clears throat> but, uh, that's one experience of a tornado. But my very first experience with a tornado when I was growing up as a kid. <clears throat> this is a Christmas Eve tornado. Yep. 1964. I was about 10 years old. Christmas Eve was when we all got together. Because all family was here anyway. Four boys, mom and daddy. Christmas Eve when we just sit around a tree and open our presents after we had supper. Well, we did that and the weather was really bad, storming, carrying on, lightning hitting. But we was in the safe house. You know. We got all that spud. Don't know my channel, that's my dog. He introduces himself in strange ways. Anyhow, we opened all our presents around the Christmas tree and, you know, had dessert and all that junk. And then that weather boy got bad and bad and bad. And uh, the phone rang, which was a landline phone in those days, 1964. <clears throat> the phone rang and it was the mayor, Walter Williams. He said, Howard, I'm calling all the business owners downtown. Downtown took a direct hit from this tornado. He said, you may want to go check on your business. So daddy said, yes, sir. So they looked around and my daddy, I don't know, there's four boys sitting there and he always chose me. <laughs> Even 10 years old. <clears throat> said, Ed, come on, go with me. Gotta go downtown. It's been a tornado. 
<clears throat> yesterday. Do I need to get a gun? He said, no. You better go and need a gun. Ten years old now. <laughs> I already knew what guns was about. <clears throat> and uh, so I get in my daddy's station wagon with him. We, we head toward town, which is about three miles from where I live at. And uh, got up there, and there's a roadblock. Big white lights and stuff shining on the road roadblock. <clears throat> the National Guard was already on scene. I don't know who was running our National Guard in them days, but they, whoever it was, act, you know, it takes a governor to activate the National Guard, or it takes a strong leader within the National Guard that turned his dismiss off, uh, to activate. And whoever it was running that show at the time, he activated, he, he must have had him on alert, he activated him, and you couldn't get downtown without a roadblock. So we pull up to the roadblock, <clears throat> and it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, let me set the scene for you again. About 2 o'clock in the morning. And the young man stops us. He got a, I don't know what, M1 <laughs> strapped on him. <clears throat> and uh, comes up and says, yeah, the road's closed, sir, downtown to me. Dad said, yeah, I, I know. The mayor called me. I got a business downtown. He told me I need to go check on it. It's a bakery and it's got gas. <clears throat> said, yes, sir. He said, uh, that young fellow with you right there, uh, you're going to have to take responsibility for him, Dad. So don't you worry about him. We drove on through. We turned down there, went down one block, turned in, got on the main street, Wayne Street. Wayne Street is the main street back in them days. Now it's handcuffed. But anyway, and we got, there's no power. We got, and there's, lines across the road. And this is back when the railroad track ran through town too. Yeah, the railroad track ran right down Main Street. Google that, Millersville uh, Railroad. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> uh, we, we dodge this, dodge that. We get, and we look, I'm looking and Dan's like, man, look at that. Cover Kids Drugstore. But you had a soda fountain in it back in the day. You had a, you know, a fountain bar. Yeah, it was a drugstore, but it also had a fountain. I mean, that's where all the kids go after school. Go in there and quarter. You get your root beer float or whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> the windows are busted out of it. The owners tore off and gone. Lane's Army Store, the windows are blowed out of it. <clears throat> Roses, five and nine. Windows are blowed out of it. The roof's half off, there's bubble gum all over the street, maybe a little bit of wrappers, and <clears throat> it's crazy, furniture in the street from the furniture store, <clears throat> and we get to the bakery and pull up, ain't there a window or nothing broke out, we look around, it's before alarms, he didn't have alarms going off, we just looked around, it had old three cell rail back flashlight, you know, I used to get you two cell and a three cell boy. You, anyway, we're looking around, unlock the door, and we go in there and get back there. And, and he, daddy cuts the gas off on the oven. We don't smell no gas, he cuts the gas off on the oven just to make dang sure. Shut the oven down. That oven always ran, even if you wasn't baking, you'd leave the oven on. Uh, I don't know what you call it. We used to call it Cadillac. Getting ready to leave for the weekend or something. They said, you got the oven Cadillac? And I said, yeah. I turn it down to 200 degrees. And it maintained that. Anyway, when you got ready to cook, you didn't take that long to heat it up. That's what it's all about. Because <clears throat> when you're going in there and you're making baking goods, you don't need to be waiting around on the wood. 
turn it on. As soon as you turn the lights on, anytime you get your stuff together, the oven's ready to go. Anyhow, <clears throat> we back there, and the back door was wide open. There was a back door in, in, in the bakery. If you opened the back door and went out of it, you'd drop 20 feet to your death. <laughs> yeah, because it was this high on this street and this low on the street below it, and the bakery went like this, and open that door, you open it. There's a basement here, and we kept all the supplies in. But anyway, uh, we got the donut fryer. Morris, it was his job every day to, he left to make sure, they open that door cause it's hot. You know, let the heat out. His job to make sure that door was closed and there was one of them bolt things. He forgot to do it. But we, we all figured out that's why, uh, Spuddy, you okay over there, buddy? He's doing a lot of grunting. Anyway, <clears throat> the fire inspector told us, <clears throat> That's why your building windows didn't blow out. You didn't have no negative pressure in here. Talk to me, brother. Yeah. Boy, he's a he's a harder than some gun, ain't he? <laughs> that's what the fire inspector told us. He said, well, that's why your will windows didn't blow out. It get blown in. <clears throat> the pressure was equalized so that back door was open. Now in the kitchen, man, there was pans and spatulas and rolling boards <laughs> there was crap everywhere all over the floor stuck up on the ceiling <clears throat> we, we, we started cleaning all that stuff up and then said, ah, we, we can all, i get all that done tomorrow <clears throat> so i get jw to come in and I'll call everybody else tell them don't come in anyway <clears throat> Don't tell me about it. Now, doggone, my dog was going to steal the show. Spud. Spud. What are you doing over there? Huh? You was thinking about that French pool, ain't you? It smelled like she just got a bath at Dago. It's a pet store. I know. Yeah. Male dogs, something else. Anyhow, I, I, I remember that, and then we rode around town, and it's a lot of businesses with store, but it was just kind of a tornado that just touched down and popped. Probably an F1. F2, man, F3, catastrophic. <clears throat> F4 is when you don't find roofs the roofs blow it off and they're laying over here brandon's video there eddie family farms go watch it his video he showed where a roof was sitting in somebody's front yard and it come from about two blocks over the whole friggin roof sitting in your front yard how would you like to wake up to that walk out your front door after the storm with a cup of coffee say see what's going on out here martha what do you say? You got your cup of coffee, you know. Marford there's a roof in our front yard. A what? There's a friggin' roof. A big house in our yard. I can't hear you. Sound like you said there's a big roof sitting in our front yard. I said, yeah, then, Martha. I left you a cup of coffee to get your butt out here. You got to see this. I can just imagine that. Oh, I tell you. When I think I'm getting creative, he, 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 you know, he just blows me out in the morning. That's right. He's thinking about that French poodle. I'm telling you, all that come from the pet place and just got shampooed. And they met in the parking lot. <clears throat> and he had been nuts ever since. Yeah, old French poodle. Huh? Huh? Uh oh. Messed up his dream. Anyhow, uh. Tornadoes. That's what they call acts of God. 
in the X uh, on insurance forms. Yeah, anyhow. Uh, some insurance don't cover it. So I ask you, and the same with hurricanes. Uh, you might want to check your homeowner's insurance. <clears throat> And it, 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 tornadoes are called acts of God. Hurricanes are called acts of God. But they'll actually say, we'll cover tornadoes and we'll cover hurricanes, but we won't cover other acts of God and or warfare. Ooh, warfare. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, check your insurance policy. Make sure that's all right. Because uh, you may live in somewhere you think it never happened. But uh, it does. And I've seen it a few dozen times here and there, all kind of catastrophic weather events. <clears throat> and you often wonder what what what's the good Lord thinking? Well, you know what? I was thinking <clears throat> and I texted Daniel today and told him why are you down there pushing all that rubble around and loading it up? <clears throat> right now, they're just pushing around in piles. Later, they're going to have to have trucks come through there and haul it off. And where they haul it off to, it's going to be a toxic dump forever. <laughs> so back, I said, uh, Daniel, uh, make sure you, you know you wear some kind of protection because the old buildings, I guarantee, going to have some asbestos in them. Like almost all old buildings. So, you know. If it don't get dusty and the wind's blowing, you, you get, you're alright, but fine. But it gets all dusty and everything, you bring that dust. <clears throat> A lot of best best is them old one of your old buildings, I can tell you that. But, uh, that place is, I guess the Lord said, let's, let's rebuild this. Let's rebuild this better. There it is. Now, the downtown part just got hit. I've been down there. That's where the uh, Buffalo Hippie was. That's uh, Daniel's mother-in-law, DJ's mama, Donna. Yeah, I know Donna. I don't know about her first name. Anyway. But anyway, uh, cool, cool woman right there. Anyway, she had a nice store down there. and I took her some T-shirts and, and uh, bought some jerky down there and few other odds and ends, and me and old Roger were with me that day. Well, then there Roger actually spent any money. He spent some money. Well, yeah, I think he bought some buffalo jerky or something. Anyhow, uh, all this wiped out, just gone, boom, just like a bomb went off. Yeah, crazy. Just crazy. But I think the good Lord's going to, Say, so let's step up and uh, let's build sulfur. One of the most beautiful towns I've ever been in in my life. Simple town, 5,000 people. Everybody knows everybody. There's a national park, butts up to the town. Summertime, there's 10,000 people there because 5,000 people a day come to this beautiful national park. But it's such a, a beautiful area. And see it all just get blowed up in one night. That's food drinking his water. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, y'all, I don't want to do the thoughts and prayers thing. I, I just want to say, uh, you know, let's try to help these folks out. Uh, and 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 the thing is, is yeah, right here. Show it again. And I know you can't see it very well. I wrote the light pen, but it's bank, B-A-N-C. First, dot bank, slash sulfur, and you can donate. <clears throat> that money goes to Crossways Church. Who will distribute it? Who will spend it? And right now, the big need is... Uh, for totes, 
to put your stuff in that you can salvage. <laughs> and, uh, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. Uh, generators. There's no power. The power companies are there doing their best to get it all put back up. But it was one cluster cluck of wires. Oh, by the way, uh, for those that watch me, uh, and, 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 and know my friends, I got a scoop for y'all. I've been telling y'all, this is the best kept secret on YouTube. Here it is. Now, y'all know I love sulfur. I'd be living there now. There's something else, but anyway. Guess who came to Sulphur today to help out? See, I know this stuff. Gary Walker. Sean Fonsworth. Keep it in Dutch. Yeah, some of y'all know. Uh, and uh, Kevin Hidden Heights Farm. They showed up today. They took time. Out of their life, go down to Sulphur and see what they could do to help. You know, that's what this YouTube community is all about. And I guess that's why y'all stick with me. Because I stick with y'all. And if there ever was somebody that needs some help right now, that town does but anyway i just want to let y'all know that, that you got that scoop from here Shh, let's get figured on youtube but uh yeah so that'd be probably be some videos coming out with them down there helping out and all that kind of stuff they got to make content or they can't make money if you can't make money they can't be down in sulfur helping out so go get the circle donate watch videos Everybody needs need your help right now. It'll be years, years before that place is back to any kind of normality. It will. But the grace of God and everybody's help. Maybe we can shorten that. Can you? Anyhow. So what I got tonight, tornadoes, help, we need it, God bless everybody, walk with Jesus, and we love you, adios, say bye spud.